Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So as we told that economics is all about how uh, an economy or a society is managing with its scarce resources, right? So in in that process, uh, you you know this managing or the society is managing with its resources not by uh, any dictator or any powerful person uh, who is dictating others. You behave this way, you behave that way, something like that. Rather. So million of uh, households, million of people are interacting among themselves through their interactions, uh, this resources, scarce resources are distributed among the people of the society. Okay. And the principles or the way through which this, these resources are distributed among the people of the society, economic agents, uh, we can Club those principles, those ways into broadly uh, 10 uh, rules, those are called 10 principles. So, today we will uh, discuss some of those uh, principles. Okay. So, first of those principles is like that see I am a person or you, you what kind of decision making every, every uh, layer of decision making right, we, we have to, we have to decide how I will, I will allocate my own time or my resources over the uh, options available before me. Like that say I am a person, I have 24 hours a day, those 24 hours how I will allocate for different activities to me, that is my uh, resource, right? that time what is available to me that is my resource. That 24 hours suppose say 6, 8 hours I am keeping aside for taking rest uh, or sleep or whatever and remaining 16 hours, how much of those 16 hours I will sell in the labor market to earn some money. Again whatever money I am, I am, I am earning, that money income with, with that I have to run my family. Okay. So, suppose I am, I am earning 1000 rupees. Okay. Out of that 1000 rupees whether I will completely spend those 1000 rupees or maybe 800 rupees I will spend today and 200 rupees remaining 200 rupees I will, I will save for my future consumption okay. that is called saving. Okay. So, in that way even when say suppose I decided that 200 rupees I will save, in which way I will save, okay. should, we, should, we, should I keep that 200 rupees in my pocket idle or should I keep that 200 rupees in a bank account? or should I keep uh, that 200 rupees in some commercial papers or something like that. So, every, every layer of our decision making certain options are there okay, and we are taking decision accordingly. Okay. So, exactly that way all the people, all the households, all the farms uh, you know that um, two basic activities in an economy are consumption and production okay, and production. Uh, the unit which are responsible to produce goods and services those are termed as farms and units which are responsible for uh, consumption of goods and services those are uh, termed as households. Okay. So, in an economy all sorts of decision making is actually happening through interaction of millions of people, farms, households and all across themselves they are transacting with goods and services through the market. Now, let us define what is market. See, when we are telling uh, about market, some uh, prior notion, some uh, picture is immediately coming to your mind as if there, there is a place where buyers and sellers are transacting or interacting using goods and services among themselves, right. But market in economics, market, okay, let us define market. market. In economics, market is not a place as such, rather it is an organization through which buyers and sellers are transact goods and services among themselves. 
Okay. It, it may be a place, most of the cases it is a place, some geographical location where these buyers and sellers they gather together. It may not be place also, it may be say website, some internet, internet kind of thing through which say stock market uh, transactions. Okay. You need not go to any, any place or any as such market. Say there is a web page through which you can log in and you can participate into uh, purchasing or selling of shares and stocks and all those. Right. So, in economics, let me define or let me repeat again, market is an, in an organization through which buyers and sellers participate in transaction of goods and services. Okay? And in this economics, through this market, millions of people are interacting, okay? millions of people, millions of household, millions of farms. In a totality, many, millions of uh, so many or large number of economic agents are interacting among themselves. Okay? And as we told that those the laws following which these transactions happen take place. Okay? Those are roughly clubbed under train principles. So, those, so today first we will discuss the first principle that is principle number one, people face trade-offs. Okay. By this what we are, we are referring? See, just uh, sometimes back we told that uh, at every layer of decision making, I am choosing from the alternative uh, available to me. Like when I am going to uh, say save my 200 rupee, whether I will keep me in my pocket as idle or whether I will store that in a, in a bank account to earn some rate of interest as well or whether I will, I will spend or I will invest that in a little bit more risky but more a high rewarding kind of investment opportunity like maybe uh, stock market, right? So, this kind of every layer of decision making, all of us face some sort of trade-off, okay? Uh, like like uh, you, you being the student, your most precious uh, resource is uh, time, your time, right? So, in a day perhaps you have 24 hours, out of that uh, perhaps you are keeping uh, 8 hours aside for your taking rest. So, 16 hours, that 16 hours you are, you are assigning. So, you have so many subjects you have to study, right? So, that 16 hours you have to uh, allocate, uh, suppose say 4 uh, or 5 total uh, papers are there in one semester, right? So, you have to allocate those 16 hours over those 5 papers or 6 papers what you have to uh, study, okay? And here we are referring trade-off means, uh, if you if you allocate some little bit more time to one subject, you have to cut down that time from the another subject. Okay, because each of us, uh, whatever resource I have or we have, maybe time, maybe money to spend somewhere or where, whatever resource we have. Okay, it's it's always uh, scarce. It's not boundless. Okay, so it's limited. So with that, we have to manage to sustain. Right. So, people face trade off by that, we are telling that you have to face uh, when you are taking your own decision making, whatever resource you have, that you have to allocate either on this or that or that. It is not that as much as possible I can allocate only here, okay? because you do not have resource as much you, you perhaps wish to have. Okay? So, that is the people face trade off. In fact, uh, one, one entire economy, economy also face some sort of trade off. What is that? Okay. Two terminologies we have introduced earlier, say uh, one is called efficiency and another is called equity. Policy makers in a country or in an economy they also face trade off between these two efficiency and equity. So, what efficiency or by efficiency what we refer? Whatever limited resources an economy or a society has through that uh, best way of using of those resources uh, is called efficiency or efficiency is a principle through which we can attain maximum amounts of goods and services. Okay, using the resources that society has. Alternatively, by equity, what we are referring? Equity, the whatever resource a country has or a society has, 
that resource how equally that resource are distributed across the agents of that society or member of that economy. Okay? So, obviously you can see that policy makers because any country any society has limited number of resources and when the policy makers of that country are going to distribute that resources more equally to the members of that society they have to perhaps compromise efficiency to some extent. Why I am telling that let me clarify because so look at here uh, to run government in a society right you need certain resources not only that and that, that money how government uh, gets government imposes tax on the people who are more capable who have more money who have more income right and that tax it redistribute to the people who are more needy perhaps poorer people right now this taxation mechanism through that tax when government is collecting money. So, what government is doing? So, person A has more money. So, suppose 10 percent of that money whatever he has government is taking as tax right. So, definitely uh, if that person has 1000 rupees government is collecting 100 rupees 10 percent of that 1000 rupees as tax. If that person earns little bit more maybe 1500 rupees government is taking 10 percent as tax 150 rupees as tax. So, what kind of message the person who is earning he or she is getting that as I am earning more I have to pay more amount of money to government as tax 100 rupee vis a vis 150 rupee uh, using the example we can bring. So, this taxes and mechanism even if the tax rate is 10 percent amount of tax is varying and amount of tax is increasing because his income is increasing. So, tax you can think of as some sort of discouragement to the person who is producing or who is more, uh, more active, more productive, right. So, in that way when government is going to collect resources to redistribute, perhaps redistribute to the more needy people, it has to collect the resources to the people who are wealthier people, who are rich people. Okay. So, in that process when you are through redistribution what we are going to attain? We are going to attain perhaps more equity or more equitable distribution of resources across the members of the society. right? So, when you are trying to attain more equitable distribution you are actually indirectly discouraging the people who are more efficient who are capable to produce goods and services more than the other people who are not that much capable right. So, essentially an economy an entire country face not only that all of us are facing uh, trade off in our decision making. I have some limited resources I have to proper utilization of that either this I will use that resources of either this investment or that investment or that investment ok. Exactly same way one country has whatever limited resources is there uh, sometimes it has to face or policy makers of that country has to face some sort of trade off when they wants to attain either efficiency or equity ok this kinds of things. So, so let me sum up. The first principle, first principle is that since any economy, any society, even any individual up within the society, okay, have whatever resources that is limited, it has to face some trade off, okay, okay. People face trade off. That is the first principle. Let us take go go to our second principle uh, about cost of something. So it is cost of something. is what you have to give up or sacrifice to get it. Okay. So, when we tell that okay, uh, see in, as I told earlier any uh, terminology whenever we are introducing here may have it may have some uh, uh, specific definition in economics right. Uh, but apart from that whenever we are using say market or like cost right 
uh, immediately some kind of picture is coming to all of your mind, right. So, uh, when we are discussing in economics a specific definition, how we define that particular concepts, you see that we are clarifying uh, around that picture what is immediately come to coming to your mind like cost no say you, you are going to purchase a pen from from a market right so suppose uh, the uh, price of that pen is 10 rupees okay so definitely we used to tell that uh, cost of that pen is 10 rupees okay in the market right so definitely when you are getting that or when you are willing to get that pen from the market you have to sacrifice something that 10 rupees uh, you have to sacrifice right so that we are telling here cost of something is what you have to give up to get that particular commodity goods or services ok ok. So, let us go to the next page. So, here we will introduce another concept called opportunity cost opportunity cost ok. So, cost in the in the sense that opportunity cost and this opportunity cost first let us uh, discuss uh, by opportunity cost what we are referring and then you will understand this opportunity cost uh, will help us in decision making when we are facing trade off ok. We will we'll take an example ok. So, opportunity cost look at here we told that cost ok. Opportunity cost we are bringing that terminology because when you are paying or giving up something to get some commodity right essentially you are losing some opportunity in which sense that opportunity suppose the example we have given that one pen right. So, you are getting that pen from the market and giving up for that you are giving up 10 rupees. So, when you are giving up 10 rupees necessarily you are losing opportunity of getting something else which you could get using that 10 rupee right. So, in that sense cost you can think of as opportunity cost when let me repeat again when you are giving up something you are losing the opportunity of getting something else by which you are giving up by which by that you can get something else like like that example by 10 rupee when I am giving to the market or the seller of that pen to get that pen, if I do not purchase the pen, I can use that 10 rupee to purchase say, some food items, right. In that sense, in economics, cost mostly are referred as opportunity cost, ok. And how this opportunity cost helps us to determine uh, our decision making when we face trade off, say, suppose one farmer, right it has one piece of land say one acre of land one acre one acre of land one farmer has ok and it has to decide it is facing trade off on the decision making process that what he will cultivate right in the rainy season or monsoon uh, that same land he can he can uh, grow paddy alternatively he can grow jute ok both are uh, rainy season crop ok. So, now suppose after going paddy he will get some income right whatever rice and straw whatever he is producing that he can sell in the market and he can earn some income right. So, that in one acre of land by growing paddy he can earn say 10,000 of rupees as income ok. Alternatively he can grow jute in that same piece of land right by which exactly the same way he will go some uh, jute he will produce some straw he will produce no. So, using all those things if he, if he sell in the market and all he can earn some income that is say 15,000 rupees ok. So, when we are telling that this opportunity cost can help you in decision making look at here this particular farmer in his land he cannot grow paddy and jute simultaneously you know either paddy or jute right. Now, if he produce paddy or grow paddy he is losing the opportunity of growing jute and vice versa when he is growing jute he is losing the opportunity of growing paddy. In that sense and if this is the potential earning structure from either growing paddy or growing jute, we can tell 
opportunity cost of going paddy is this much of rupees and similarly opportunity cost of growing jute is this much of rupee okay so and what is the principle here to uh, to take your decision making principle he or she that farmer should follow that he should choose that decision making or that choice for whose opportunity cost is less look at here as i told paddy is opportunity cost is rupees 15000 Jute's opportunity cost is rupees ten thousand. So where opportunity cost is less, Jute's opportunity cost is less, right? Jute's opportunity cost is less. So he should produce juice. See same thing. You can you can you can look at it as the potential income point of view. No, by con, uh, by cultivating jute, he will get fifteen thousand rupees. Alternatively, by cultivating paddy, he will get ten thousand rupees. So he will choose jute because he will get more income there. okay same thing we are telling he should consume or he should choose that thing where opportunity cost is lower or less now one potential uh, potential problem you people may face suppose three commodities are there paddy jute and say another commodity say crop crop x another by crop x in the same time so one acre of land he can he can produce either paddy or jute or some another crop that is we are terming as crop x right so that crop x if he grow his potential income is say suppose 20000 rupees okay suppose this is the scenario not the two commodity kind of scenario now he has three alternative choices and he has to take decision making now the question is what is the opportunity cost of paddy in this particular case earlier it was opportunity cost of paddy cultivation was 15000 rupees because only one option was there jute now two options are there so definitely paddy's opportunity cost will be maximum of these two okay so definitely paddy's opportunity cost will be rupees 20000 jute's opportunity cost will be maximum of these two okay so jute's opportunity cost also is 20000 rupees okay and crop x the other crops its opportunity cost is basically maximum of this two so definitely 15000 rupees so whose commodity is opportunity cost is less paddy's opportunity cost rupees 20000 jute's opportunity cost also rupees 20000 and crop x the other third commodity its opportunity cost is rupees 15000 so definitely he should choose that as the principle we told that he should or that farmer should choose uh, that commodity to grow whose opportunity cost is less so here paddy's opportunity cost is rupees 20000 jute's opportunity cost is rupees 20000 and crop x's opportunity cost is rupees 15000 so definitely he should produce uh, crop x because its opportunity cost is lower okay so in that way so what we have, we have in the second principle what we have decided or what we we clarified we clarified here what is cost or by cost what we refer and in that cost in little bit more clarificatory way we refer as opportunity cost and in that process uh, we we clarified how this opportunity cost terminology or this concept of opportunity cost can help us in decision making where we are facing trade off look this farmer he is also facing trade off okay one piece of land what to cultivate either paddy or jute or some other commodity like that right so every decision making every layer of decision making you me you me all all of us all households all farms we are taking we are getting some sort of trade off we have to face trade off okay and accordingly we have to take a decision making okay so the decision making process opportunity cost may help you okay let us go to the third principle okay principle number 3 principle number 3 rational people rational people think at margin okay first let us clarify by rational people what we are referring okay rational people are a person or people are called rational when those persons are deliberately very judiciously 
taking the decision making or when they are facing alternative opportunities, alternative uh, trade off kind of situations, they are choosing the best one to achieve their goal or achieve their target. Okay. Deliberately, very consciously they are choosing the best of those alternative options available to them, so that that will be the uh, most beneficial to them. In that sense, we are referring the, the people who are that kind, who are deliberately taking that kind of decision making, those are termed as rational people. So, rational people think at margin by which, uh, by this what we are referring in economics as, as we will move, as we will move uh, chapter again, chapter right and subsequent economics discussion, you will realize that that concept of marginal thing or at the margin that concept is so important at our decision making process. Okay. Let us give an example. Okay. Say suppose, suppose say one, uh, one flight, okay, Air India flight, uh, it is flying from uh, Delhi to Mumbai. Okay. So, one trip from Delhi to Mumbai, it has to incur say uh, rupees 3 lakh. Okay, this much of rupees okay. and suppose that flight has uh, 200 uh, passenger seats right. So, you can get that per passenger how much cost it has to incur this is the cost of one trip from Delhi to Mumbai right. So, 200 total seats so per seats uh, its cost is basically rupees 3 lakh. Okay, by 200. Okay, so, that will be rupees 1500, rupees, rupees 1500 per seat right. So, definitely that Air India authority what they are setting. So, uh, price of per ticket perhaps 15, 1500 a little bit more than that because some profit margin is there right. Now, suppose one day that flight is about to get take off okay. and that time uh, 10 seats are vacant. Okay. So, you can accommodate 10 more people, okay. but the uh, two persons came and they are willing to give only 100 rupee or uh, only 1000 rupee per seat. So, apparently uh, you are getting an impression that that Air India authority they should not sell that ticket, okay. but if you rationally behave, okay. if that authority rationally behave, they should compare not vis-a-vis -vis 1500, what is its cost per seat, rather what it should compare the amount of rupees, what say rupees 1000, this the person who came here to board the flight and willing to pay, this much he is willing to pay, right? that authority, flight authority should take a decision on the basis of this thing vis-a-vis how much additional cost is it will incur if it allow that passenger to board right. So, suppose say 200 rupee it will incur because Air India flight you know that on board meal is free suppose cost of one meal is 200 rupee. So, although we are apparently at the first instance of getting an impression uh, that it should not allow that person to board okay, with this 1000 rupees, but if you compare the marginal benefit vis a vis marginal cost, this is called marginal benefit. If you allow that person, how much revenue you can earn because in any case 10 seats are vacant, right. So, this is the marginal benefit you are getting 1000 rupees from one of those passengers. What is marginal cost? Additional cost, how much you have to incur because if you allow that passenger to board, you have to give him uh, free lunch on board, right. So, that cost is 200. Right. So, that is called marginal cost, marginal cost. So, being a rational individual, rational carrier, right, I should compare, I, I, I am facing a trade off here, whether, whether to allow or not to allow. So, I am facing a trade off, whether to allow or not to allow and I am comparing this marginal benefit and marginal cost. Okay. And by that comparison, since marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost, I should allow that person. So, with this example, you can understand that rational people think at margin uh, what we are referring. Okay? Let us stop here and we will continue this in the uh, next lecture.
little bit more clarification of this rational people think and margin and then we will go to the principle number 4.